Hello everyone, welcome to Urbanscape Bangalore and in this episode we will be looking at the ground orchid or this Pathoglottis plicata which is a terrestrial orchid that grows in the ground and are not epiphytic like the other common orchids. It is found in tropical zones of the world and stretches from Southeast Asia to Australia. Though terrestrial, it is from the orchid family and that's why the flowers look typically orchid. So if you live in frost countries, then it could be difficult to grow this without a greenhouse. This is a perennial in warm tropical countries. The plant is characterized by these two foot long flower stalks with flowers of mostly purple, white, pink or light lavender color like this. And finally, the vibrant yellow, which I am so in love with. They have these almost palmate leaves that come out of these pseudobulbs or fake bulbs. They have a clumping nature and that is why you will find along with the amazing blooms some amazing looking leafy extravagance. The flowers will almost always form seeds and they can self-seed very effectively. The seeds are found in pods like this that will break open once it dries and the seeds will come out. So you can propagate this plant with just a seed or separate the clumps to get new plants. The plant starts blooming from the summer months until winter and sometimes even beyond that and the flowers are long lasting so you get the feeling of perpetuality with these amazing blooms. There is no fragrance to the flowers as far as I know so let's quickly look at the care conditions this plant likes. Sunlight. So I tried a little experiment with this yellow orchid and I kept this under full sun and it did not grow and it was struggling. But these plants that are in a southwest facing balcony have done really well and has consistently given out blooms. So in short, keep this under part sunlight but brightly lit locations is where you need to keep this plant. Avoid direct sunlight. Watering. This is a little drought tolerant and can live without water for at least a week but I would suggest you water this every day during summer and reduce watering during winter. Potting mix. Use a well draining mix of 30% compost, 50% sand, 20% garden soil or cocoa peat. Fertilizing. Now I just use compost or almost all the time kitchen waste like this with tea leaves etc. So a lot of you are skeptical of using raw kitchen waste fearing it would attract diseases. I'm definitely not some scientist but as a layman gardener with only experience on my side, this is my take. So for me, the addition of kitchen waste has helped a lot in first avoiding using chemical feed. And with such organic additions, you are attracting earthworms and redworms that are good for the soil. So if you have outdoor plants, you can without any hesitation use kitchen waste. Yes, it might attract fruit flies, but apart from that, I don't see any problems with it. But don't try this for your indoor plants. Also, continuous rain can attract fungus, but that's okay. I don't see what the big deal is. If it works for me, I'm sure it can work for you too. But while adding the kitchen waste, add it on the periphery of the plant and not bang on its stem or the center of the plant because that could cause fungal diseases. Pruning. Removing spent blooms along with the stalk can trigger more blooming. Now pests and diseases. So the only pest I see on this plant is the white fly but I don't see much problems with it but you can use neem oil pesticide or just diluted soap solution to get rid of these pests that take umbrage under these leaves. Now fungal spots like this can occur if the water on the leaves stay for a very long time without evaporating. You can dilute baking soda and apply on the leaves to reduce this problem. And these are just sunburns on the leaves. And last but not the least, we will be talking about propagation. This is primarily propagated with the help of plant divisions and as you can see, the seeds can produce many saplings as well. Dividing the plant once in a while is good once you see the plant overgrowing the container. So if you want to look at the detailed propagation video, I have added a link above and you can watch it. This is a very easy plant to propagate. So I've had people telling me that they've got this plant but they don't see flowers in them. So to them I would say that be patient, the plant needs to grow more of these clumping pseudobulbs and once enough of them are formed is when it will even think of blooming. 
So follow the above steps to keep your plant blooming and the best part is that you can grow the spathoglottis in the ground, a container or a hanging basket and once it blooms you can see it enthrall your flower happy eyes. So as a follow up video to the glass container video, I'll show you when you should water this container. So as you can see the top soil is almost bone dry and the plant also has lost its fluffiness and that is when you need to water the container and water it till you see the water coming out of the holes. Adding water onto the tray and expecting the plant to soak the water won't work with glass. So with this we have come to the end of yet another episode of Urbanscape Bangalore. I really hope you have enjoyed watching this program. Additionally, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook. The links are given below. Thank you for watching and until we meet again, a very warm goodbye.